Can you make a game with P5.js? Yes, absolutely, but should you? Mm, maybe? Let me explain. In a video I made about the Mandelbrot Fractal, a viewer left this comment and I thought they were right. So in this video, I'll share my experience of turning this P5.js sketch into a game that you can play right now on itch.io. How did I do it? And was it a good idea? Well, we'll get into that, but first, what's the game? The idea I had from reading Geordie's comment was to generate an image of somewhere in the fractal and make the player search for that location. Kind of like a GeoGuessr, but for fractals. So that's what I set out to make. I already had a really good starting point with the original code from the video. I could move around and zoom in on the fractal world. The original colors sucked, but design is not a strong suit of mine, so I just tried out a bunch. They change a lot during this video, but I think the final colors ended up being really cool. I also ended up ditching the Mandelbrot set in favor of the Julia set, because without going into the maths, this would allow me to easily add a bunch of different fractals that the player could choose from. The first thing to tackle was generating a target image. The way the original code is set up thankfully made it pretty easy. If you haven't seen the original video, I wrote some code and a WebGL shader that when given a center point and a side length would generate the fractal that fits in that rectangle. So all I had to do was randomly select a position and zoom level and I had my target. By the way, if you wanna learn about shaders, I'll link my intro to shaders video in the card. Generating good targets turned out to be a pretty tricky problem to solve and I'm still not 100% happy with the solution. Each round I made it more zoom in but the position was completely random which meant I ended up with a lot of unfindable targets. I tried a few things to combat this including trying to validate a target by analyzing the generated image for edges and contrast but in the end I just made it concentrate around the center of the fractal because in most cases this is where the action is. Definitely not perfect but good enough. Next I had to detect when the player actually found the right spot in the fractal. I did this by checking the player's position and zoom level against the target position but allowed for some wiggle room because it's pretty much impossible to get it bang on. I added an animation to the shader that makes the screen flash when the target's found and I generate a new target and start a new round. Up to this point, adding gameplay using P5 had been pretty easy, but now I wanted to add some menus and UI to my game. P5 doesn't offer anything for this out of the box, so I had to come up with my own menu structure system. I ended up creating a screen class that defines a bunch of event functions and all I have to do is keep track of the current screen and plumb in the P5.js events. P5 has no buttons by default either, so again I had to create my own method for handling them. My solution was pretty hacky, but it got the job done. Using these systems, I was able to create the simple menu structure for the game. Originally, the fractal selection screen was going to have some predefined fractals to choose from, so I made a little visualizer to translate the mouse position into coordinates for the Julia set so I could find cool fractals quickly and make levels out of them. I showed the visualizer to my partner and she said, why not just make that the selection screen, which was an absolutely brilliant idea, so I did exactly that. Now the user can choose whatever fractal they want, and if you're anything like me, you'll probably spend way too long choosing a fractal. I also wanted to add a timed mode for more of a challenge, and this is just a simple limit for how long you have to find each target. To implement this, I just kept track of when the current round started and if you've taken too long, it's game over. Because of the nature of fractals, it's incredibly easy to have no idea if you're on the right track. So to help players out, I wanted to add hints. I experimented with a few different really bad ideas before landing on the classic warmer colder. Basically, it just compares your current position with the previous position and tells you if you're heading in the right direction. You can press the H key to show the hint and it lasts for five seconds. With all that done, it was time to add a bit of polish and finish this thing off. I cleaned up the UI a lot and gave the menu some color. I added some helpful directions to the sidebar that tell you how to play the game. I also added a button that will recenter your fractal in case you get lost and it is buttery smooth. And I also fixed up the zooming as well because it was a bit janky and would always zoom into the center of the screen. So I made it zoom into where the mouse position was and it feels way better. With sore elbows from all that polishing, it was finally time to upload to itch. And this was incredibly easy since they support HTML games out of the box. All I had to do was zip the files up and upload it. There were a few minor bugs I had to take care of, like some file paths not being formatted correctly and scrolling the page when trying to zoom in and out. But with those fixed, I could publish my game made entirely with P5.js to itch.io. So how was the experience of making and publishing a game with P5.js? There were a few aspects of using P5 that were really great. Since P5 is so easy to use, getting a first prototype working was really quick. And since it's browser-based, it's also really simple to upload it to itch and to share it with other people. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows though. As I mentioned, I had to come up with solutions for a lot of common things myself. Most game engines will have things like buttons and UI elements and scene handling out of the box, but in P5, you have to roll your own. This can be a fun challenge, and since Fractal Finder is a really small game with limited UI, it wasn't too much hassle. 
If I was making a bigger or more UI intense game like an RPG, I'd have to do some major refactoring to make things scalable and at that point I'd be making a game engine and not a game. So yes, you certainly can make and publish a game with P5.js and it can be a great exercise and learning experience, but be prepared to do a lot of things yourself. If your only goal is to create a game, it's probably best to use a dedicated game engine. If you'd like to play Fractal Finder for yourself, you can find the link in the description and let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. Thank you so much for watching, happy coding and I hope to see you again soon.